It's Saturday, the 9th of June, 2018, and this is your EV News Daily. Well, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you're listening around the world. A very warm welcome from London in the UK. Here is today's news about electric cars and that future of transport. It's Martin Lee here. I'm going through every EV article online every day, so you don't have to. Well, hello if you're listening to us and you are in the UK to go along to Fully Charged Live. Day one today, Saturday the 9th of June. Uh, If you are heading along today, looking forward to a fantastic schedule of not just seeing 50 of the best EVs out there all on show and some great trade stalls as well from people involved, anything from EVSC stuff and charging and solar and sustainable power, but also the talks that have been arranged by the fully charged team as well. Uh, This morning, it'll start at 10.45 with a global shift, the future of energy, then an introduction to electric vehicles, the fully charged home, talking about range anxiety, in the afternoon, enabling the next Tesla, electrifying conversions that's fascinating uh, how you take uh, classic cars and stick a battery inside uh, heading into the afternoon there'll be talks and sessions about the terminology of technology uh, generating your own heat and power at home then finally at four o'clock on saturday afternoon a q a uh, with bobby and johnny it says and a very nice thousand pound draw to finish the day if you are uh, in the uk and you're still listening to the podcast hopefully you are enjoying This fine country of ours, and yes, the rumours are true, we do all know the Queen personally, and we do all take afternoon tea at half past two in the afternoon. Uh, I'm glad you're in the UK if you got here safely, and if you're listening to us around the world, but following uh, it online, or maybe waiting for the videos, because if you uh, follow the Fully Charged YouTube channel, all of those um, uh, activities over this weekend will be filmed, and gradually, uh, those of us that couldn't make it will get to see them online. Well, let's get into the news then. And first of all, I really loved the name of the Porsche Mission E, their first electric car. Mission E sounds great. They're on a mission, right? Yeah, I can get behind that. They're on a mission to electrify the E. Ah, yeah. Um, Slight problem. That's not the name anymore. Earlier on today, uh, yesterday, in fact, uh, yeah, they changed it. Uh, The official Porsche YouTube channel released a video just now. Um, Not much speech in it. Just some lovely pictures of the car and some sound effects like this. Well, it ends on the caption, words filling the screen, simply soul electrified. That's all it says. Soul electrified. What can we read into that? Well, maybe they're having a little pop at Tesla, who are a newcomer. Uh, Maybe they're saying that Porsche has got that history, or even the Porsche brand, uh, the racing heritage. It's got soul. It's got passion. There's fire behind the name. Soul electrified was the little caption, the tagline, if you like. And I wonder what they're saying with it. I imagine what they're saying is is they're playing on the history of Porsche there and that uh, kind of emotive stuff that goes with owning a Porsche. Well, news of Porsche developing its gorgeous Mission E concept into an all-electric sports car lineup has been exciting, at least until this point, say Jalopnik, according to a presentation by the CEO of Porsche. The production version is going to be called The Taken. T-A-Y-C-A-N. The Taken, like the Macan, or is it the Take? Taken? Taken? Taken. T A Y C A N. It's a terrible name for a car. We'll get used to it. We always do with these um, these things. Uh, the name was announced by t- t- a Porsche's 70th anniversary celebrations by the CEO Oliver Bloom. According to Reuters, uh, Porsche claimed the Taken, the Taken, the Taken. Rhymes with bacon. Uh, it means lively young horse. And who doesn't love a lively young horse? Uh, it's meant to be a play on the symbolism of Porsche's coat of arms. It does sound a little bit silly. We'll get used to it. We, it's with all car names that you first hear and think, what's that? But obviously the marketing department have been through a bazillion focus groups and it, it must test well. Right, moving on. An Electrek has picked out the highlights from Tom Randall at Bloomberg, writing about a rare and I find surprising invitation to have a little snoop around the Model 3 production lines. Well, Tesla invited Bloomberg to take a look at the Model 3 production line in Fremont. 
after the most recent production shut down to add a new line. The third line we know is way more efficient than lines one and two. Uh, Tesla says the Model 3 body line is 95% automated again, including the transfer, the loading and the welding of all parts. Well, Fred Lambert continues to say that they also took a look at Tesla's quality control for the Model 3, which includes 47 robots scanning Model 3 bodies and the body line at 1,900 different points to match them to the, to the design specs. The precision they're working to is 0 0.15 millimeters. Elon's talked in the past about uh, you measuring your Model 3 or measuring any Tesla in the future and um, if it doesn't match with what it should be your ruler is wrong not the car. That's how advanced they want to get to the quality control stage. Uh, well Bloomberg also said about quality control during the first test drives on the track sound recorders measure squeaks, rattles, wind and road noise that a test driver might miss. All of the data stored with each car's unique VIN, uh, the vehicle identification number, so service centres can trace any issue back to the root cause back at the factory. Uh, the, idea, uh, the idea being that Tesla can improve the cars, that iteration, that improvement, the constant improvement they're doing even after they're in a customer's driveway. And that all comes back to Tesla being a technology company first and a car company second. They're in Silicon Valley, not Detroit. This is the way that software is developed, especially beta software that's put out there. And goodness knows I work in a really technological industry. The amount of beta software that I have to use <laughs> is, um, is interesting. And the amount of bugs that I have to find and then report either back to the devs or the engineers and say this bit isn't working, that bit isn't working. Inevitably, they'll fix three things and break two. But it, that's the world we live in right now. Even big companies like Apple and Microsoft will release beta software now as a matter of course and let the let the public and let early uh, uh, users, if you like, uh, report back to them what needs to be fixed. And that is Tesla is more of a software company than a car maker. So I'm not surprised that they are going to those levels of details of tracking any kind of quality control issues. Well, staying with Tesla, and Elon Musk has been pretty much updating us daily on Twitter about new features and things coming. And he tweeted a reply to Ryan McCaffrey, who is a DMC Ryan on Twitter and makes the always brilliant Ride the Lightning Tesla podcast, which uh, lately there's been so much to talk about. They've been like an hour and a half long, but bring it on. I can't get enough of that podcast. I mean, I have a two hour commute to work each way, right? Because I live two hours from work. So. A two-hour a two podcast is fine for me. No plans for aluminium pedals, says Elon Musk. Adds too much production complexity. Model 3 with DEF, Model 3 will DEF have summon, which will get way more advanced for S and X autopilot and all model cars, sorry, HW2 autopilot and all Model 3 cars. So why did he say that? Well, he was replying to a question that Ryan had asked. Well, Tesla's making some big changes to autopilot. Yesterday, Elon revealed that the company plans to update its semi-autonomous driving system to the summon feature being added to the Model 3. The update's set to come as part of the broader push to make Tesla's cars run smoother, according to Inverse.com. In response to a question from Tesla fan Ryan McCaffrey, uh, Elon wrote on Twitter that he plans to bring summon to the company's newest car, which entered production in July last year. So we're almost 12 months in to Model 3 production. It's hard to believe those early weeks and months the numbers were in the single did the tens and the hundreds weren't they well this feature says the article already present on the s and the x uh, and introduced in the fall of 2015 now enables the car to open a garage enter close the door park and switch off it can also do the reverse of that when you need to leave again well tesla vehicles manufactured after october 16 use the same setup of cameras sensors, ultrasonic radar and GPS which all enable summon. With the NVIDIA Drive PX2 on board capable of supporting over the air software updates as well. I'll put a full link to the Inverse article online, please do read that if you're interested in some more. Well Mark Kane at Inside EVs has been summarising last month's EV sales in the US. May 2018 was the fourth best month for plug-in electric car sales in the US with healthy growth of 48%. Well, last month here in the UK, we were just over 5% market share. In North America, though, 
it's only at 1.5%. The Tesla Model 3 uh, set in May an all-time sales record for any plug-in car in the US, 6,250. Estimated by Inside EVs, says Mark. And actually, when you look at the uh, estimates they're having to make, because there's less and less monthly data, it's going into quarterly data, uh, which is kind of the reason behind it. So they're having to estimate. They've been freakishly close. They're so good at that. Well, let's talk about batteries for a second and Henrik Fisker. Anything you can do, I can tweet better, would be his message to Elon. Henrik Fisker has taken to Twitter to talk about the next model that he's developing. At Fisker Official is his account. Looking forward to doing some more testing this weekend on the Fisker Emotion solid state batteries, says Henrik Fisker. Hashtag testing, hashtag electric EVs, hashtag Fisker, hashtag technology, hashtag environment. It's not Instagram, you know, on Twitter. Uh, he loves the hashtag. Uh, actually, here, I'll play you it now. Let me click on play here and let me play you the short video that he put on Twitter. It was great to take another ride in the car. Can't wait to get the prototype together and get the solid state batteries in it. Right, and finally, Green Car Reports has a really interesting article on signage at charging stations. And this isn't about keeping combustion cars away. This is about educating EV owners about what kind of charging options are available as they pull up to each charging station by the use of big numbers and letters on the charging station. Well, charging has been a key obstacle for EV car buyers, and it may might not just be the number of public stations available. With three different levels of charging and multiple charging speeds and connector types within each of those, it can really be confusing actually for the newbie, uh, the average driver, to know what type of charger can I use here, what charger is this, I've, just, I've never seen this one before, uh, to give you the fastest charge that your car can handle, says Green Car Reports. Well, there's some new signs which have been proposed and some new letters and numbers which would be on big signs kind of next to the charging station or on the charging station. Green, a green sign, uh, the green logo would indicate a standard uh, J1772 connector along with a CCS combo fast charge counterpart. A car with CCS fast charge connector uh, takes the standard J plug for slower charges. Now a blue sign is for Chadamo or Chademo DC fast charge connectors. Uh, cars that have a Chadamo fast charge port also have the separate J port for everyday charges. And finally, a red sign would be for Teslas, which have their own type of connector, obviously. Uh, nothing in there about uh, the Chinese standards, by the way, and the Chinese connectors. But have a look at the article on Green Car Reports. I think it's really fascinating. And I think this is kind of interesting because Tesla are going to be making so many cars. Certainly the uh, established automakers are going to be making so many cars now. You're going to get a lot of people driving EVs for the first time and the community is going to get r much bigger, much faster. Well, just going back to the fully charged live event this weekend here in the UK, a quick shout to Mark, who is uh, one of the longtime listeners of the podcast. Mark runs the Northeast, Northwest, sorry, England EV owners club on facebook on organizing events and get togethers and uh, mainly around liverpool and he picked up a car today to drive to uh, yesterday actually to drive to fully charged and it's uh, it's a gorgeous new 40 kilowatt hour leaf he collected it from liverpool nissan and he's going to have it for the fully charged weekend have a little play with and uh, play with the charging just investigate rapid gate which kind of seems to have gone away for nearly everybody that was well We'll follow that one. But it, it, I don't see as many reports these days as, as people kind of learn to live with what their cars can and can't do. Uh, so a little shout out to Liverpool Nissan on the podcast. And hi to Nick Ball as well, who listens to the podcast too. And a mention from Mark to him. Get in contact if you want to. You can email the show directly. It is hello at evnewsdaily.com. That is hello at evnewsdaily.com. I never give out the email address enough, really. Uh, hi to um, Mike from Georgia in the USA, who's emailed me to say on the podcast earlier this week, you were talking about charging ratios. Well, Elon Musk was talking about charging ratios. And he said, how about you delve into that a little bit more? So we will. 
uh, in the next few days. In the meantime, let's spread the word about EVs. Please share the podcast with anyone who might be interested. All the previous ones are on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, YouTube, TuneIn Stitcher, and SoundCloud on the blog at evnewsdaily.com. If you subscribe, then you get them first and free and automatically. If you get a chance to rate and review, you know it really helps out, but no worries if you're busy. And come and say hi on the socials. Just search for EV News Daily and you'll find us. Have a wonderful Saturday, and I'll catch you tomorrow.